So, uh, my first band, The Untamed Youth, we toured to New York City and uh, we wound up hooking up with Norton Records, Billy and Miriam, a lot of you guys know these people. And uh, Billy Miller took one look at us and he realized we were so painfully Midwestern and just, just dorks, just a bunch of 16 year old dorks. He's like, you know, you guys really aren't going to pull off this uh, Rolling Stones thing that you have in your mind. You're really, you're just, you're not badasses. Why don't you become a surf band? So that's really why the Untamed Youth wound up being more of a surf band than anything else. And it kind of worked, you know, because we were all guys fresh out of high school. We barely knew how to play our instruments. We kind of looked like a surf band, so it, it, it sort of worked. I started writing uh, original songs for that, that group. And I wrote this next song. This is really like the first full-formed original song I ever wrote for the Untamed Youth. And when we recorded it, I could not believe that it wasn't a hit. I thought, look, this is a song about Ellie Mae Clampett from the Beverly Hillbillies, the woman who gave me my first direction. And, and I wrote this beautiful love song to her, and it's the best song ever written, and it's not a hit. I do not understand. Now, keep in mind, this was like, I don't know, 1988 or something like that. Uh, I think Pearl Jam and all that was coming on the scene right around that time, so this didn't fit in. But I'd like to perform it for you now, a little thing called Hey Ellie Mae. <laughs> his 30th birthday, but the, the scary thing is, is Dolly posted a picture of you when you were 21, and you look exactly the same, dude. <laughs> but let's, while, you know, while we have this nice coffee house vibe, why don't we all sing an acoustic guitar happy birthday to Zach Simpson over here. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Zach. Happy birthday to you. Okay, all right. <laughs> and what about your birthday spanking? Your... And we got cupcakes. Oh, you got cupcakes? Well, Sugar Balls isn't here for the birthday spanking. I know. So... Yeah, that's true. I mean, I suppose we could substitute a good looking girl for Sugar Balls to give you the spanking. But... Are these uh, open to anybody who wants them? Okay, there's free cupcakes up here. Free music and free cupcakes. Okay. You can't beat that. <laughs> One spanking. One spanking. <laughs> Zach, give me 30 minutes. I'll call yeah. for West Ham. There we go. <laughs> so. 1991, I, I moved with the Untamed Youth out here to Los Angeles, California. We were going to make it big. 
We're going to be huge stars. And uh, some of the people who tried to help us are actually in the room here tonight. Art Fine and uh, Mr. Dominic Priori, both of which who had us on their, their TV shows. And uh, of course, we were playing surf music before Pulp Fiction came out, which, you know, timing, it really is everything. Because we broke up right when Pulp Fiction came out. <laughs> Complete, yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? But, uh, the, the, the good thing is, is I discovered what an amazingly rich musical scene there was out here in Los Angeles for all this great rockabilly and 50s rock and roll and doo-wop and rhythm and blues. And uh, so I started a band with Dave Stuckey called the Dave and Dean Combo. We play a lot of rockabilly music. And we got to work with uh, a lot of the great uh, legends that were here, still here in Los Angeles. And uh, we have one of those guys here tonight, Mr. Eddie Daniels. Ghetto Baby. Why don't you get up and sing a song with me, man? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I, just, I just got to play with, with Eddie Daniels a couple of weeks ago at the Ponderosa Stomp Festival in New Orleans, and he went over like gangbusters, man. They loved you. Yeah. I got a mic for you here. Yes, there were two. I would like to thank you in person in front of all your friends because if it wasn't for him that night I would have been a flop <laughs> that's not true but I appreciate you saying it it was great it was a really great show <clears throat> what can where we was do that? well I just want to tell a little bit about Eddie Daniels because he made some great records uh, under his own name uh, back back in the day and he, he wrote a song Little Lou for Eddie Cochran and uh, and then he yeah. made a really cool record it's one of those those great records that uh, I can only think of this example it's sort of a black Everly Brothers record ah. that you did with with Jewel Akins under the name Jewel and Eddie yeah yeah can we do that one yeah we can do that in G yeah okay. give it up for Mr. Eddie Daniels the ghetto baby yeah. Hey, look, look here. This is my 60th year in show business, so if I move slow, please forgive me. I started in 1954, and I'm still here. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah! I saw how slow you moved at the Ponderosa's town. You, you killed them there, man. Okay, here, let's try this. Well, we lost him, man. 
<laughs> That's a bad luck song. <laughs> well, stick around, man. I want to get you up for the encore later on. Oh, okay. One more time for Mr. Eddie Daniel. Hey. Hey. And when you go home tonight, if you have not heard of Eddie Daniels, hit up YouTube and look up some of his tunes because you got some great ones. You got some really cool ones you did in the fifties. I like the the funky records you did, did in the seventies, man. Five. I wrote five for uh, Eddie Cochran. That's right. Yeah. I wrote three for Frank Dorsen. I didn't know that. I wrote yeah. three for John Ashley. Wow. I wrote one for Dick Dell and the Delts. So it was called Hot Rod Racer. There you go. I did not know you wrote Hot Rod Racer for Dig Dale and the Delta.